Rock Touch Mobile Polishing and Detailing. And today, I'm going to show you how to get this old fuel tank polished back to new. Step by step, what products I use to the final touches. I'm going to be doing this interior over there. And I'm going to be doing a before and after video on that. I will be doing an interior video on how to pour the process off. Uh, another time, today I don't have an insane amount of time because it's a Super Bowl tonight and I would love to watch that with my friends and, uh, and my girlfriend and my little son. Uh, today's video is mostly based on the fuel tank um, because I don't want to overcomplicate it on the first video and it would probably be more enjoyable for you if we do fuel tank video Another day we do a video on rims, another day we do an a, a video on battery boxes or top of the steps or a moose bumper, all that kind of fun stuff. So we're at the shop um, getting ready to be polishing this tank. I already cleaned the interior on this truck. As you can see, it looks pretty neat. Later on in the video, you will see more. This truck is going to get painted tomorrow, most likely. Um, they still have a lot of work to do. They're gonna prep all night and paint it tomorrow. Today, I'm going to get that tank nice and shiny. The rims for this truck, um, they are not being done because the customer that was going to drop them off uh, had to run out of town and wasn't able to drop them off. So they are putting brand new ones on instead. Um, so this tank right here, as you can see, it's pretty rough. Um, a little dirty, scratched up. It's not too crazy pitted. It has definitely seen better days. Um, but that's no biggie. I deal with this every day. First things we're gonna do, we're gonna take the steps off. So we're gonna need for these ones here, the 13 mil and a ratchet that will take care of the rest. Um, we're gonna clean the tank. Most likely with just a little bit of gray clean and a rag, just wipe it down. Um, usually I prefer pressure washing it. Today I can't do that, so I'm just gonna have to wipe it down by hand. Next things we're gonna be using is a backing plate on a variable speed uh, grinder, that Makita over there. That one is um, variable speed. You don't wanna go too fast when you're sanding. A little too slow is not gonna do very much. A flexible backing plate, and I put a half inch foam interface pad on it. So it's more forgiving. Um, this tank is pretty rough, so there's a big chance we're gonna do some 120, and then we would step down to a 220, 500, and I really like to finish off with a 800 grit. The Norton Gold sandpaper is by far my most favorite sandpaper to use. Sometimes, some guys, they like a different brand. This is the brand I like. A good respirator. Um, sanding aluminum and polishing aluminum is very dusty and unhealthy. That is a must have. A 6,000 RPM grinder uh, for the cutting. Sometimes I finish with it, but today I'm gonna to be finishing off with a variable speed. When all the polishing is done, the sanding and the heavy polishing, um, whatever we can't reach, we're gonna do by hand. Um, blend it in as much as we can. Sometimes it'll be more gray and sometimes it'll actually shine like really nice. So I like to use Renegade Products USA Rebel Red Pro. Um, this stuff is amazing. I love it. I've been using it for years. There's many other products out there that are good as well, but that is my go-to. Uh, I'm gonna be using 3-0 steel wool because it's the tank is in bad shape. Sometimes I would use the 4-0 uh, steel wool because it's a little finer. A terry towel and a couple rags to wipe off the residue. For heavy polishing, I'm gonna be using um, the brown bar from Maverick Renegade Products and to finish off in the color, the purple. Sometimes you use the green. Now it's really cold over here. Um, if I would use the green after the cut, it's not gonna look good because the temperature in here is way too cold. So that's why I like to use purple. Just, I don't know exactly why. 
the inside, like the product is made with, there's a little bit less grease, there's a lot of chromium oxide in there if I'm not mistaken. It just does a phenomenal job. You will see that in a little bit. So this orange buffing wheel right here, um, as you can see, it's been used already. Um, I use that with the brown compound. The reason being is this is really stiff, it's hard, it's gonna remove all them sanding marks really nicely. Um, the brown compound is made out of rotten rock, technically it's strip only, and uh, it's very aggressive. So it will be taking out all of the sanding marks with a breeze. After that, I'm gonna be finishing off with a cotton untreated and a purple finish compound to get that extra nice luster, super high quality shine. Now the steps are taken off. I'm just gonna clean the tank right flat. Right now, brake cleaner. All you're gonna do, screw it on, and that's it. You can give it a little extra snug if you want to. Um, don't really have to because the rotation will automatically tighten it as well. Very easy, hook and loop. I don't like the sticky stuff uh, because if dust gets in between, you will not get a, um, it won't stick. So I like to hook and loop. There's the 120 grit. Um, and simply just slap it on nice and straight. If you give it a quick spin, there shouldn't be too much movement there. First things first, I'm gonna put my respirator on and I'll start sanding and I will be putting the time lapse on. Every time I switch to a different grit sandpaper. So now I'm gonna start with 120, second step will be 220, the third step will be 500 and after that be 800 grit. stop for a second as you can see the last step I went side to side now I'm finishing with 800 I'm going up and down it doesn't really matter in what way you finish um, reason being is if you look over here all you can see is half a moon scratches going side to side over here you still see them going up and down you can see very easily if you cancelled out the previous sanding mark doing it this way I call it Cross sanding. Cross sanding, not a lot of people do it. Um, some people do a combination of orbital sanding, rotary sanding, orbital. I really like to rotary only because it's faster, uh, keeps the metal nice and flat, you use less product, less time. So, going up and down, when you're moving up and down, you got half a moon scratches horizontally, and moving left to right, you have vertical scratches. Nice way to see the two cancel out. That way you do not miss a spot or when you start polishing you see, oh no, um, there's a lot of sanding marks I cannot get out this way. That's very preventable.
it. Um, and I'll show you what grits I did first and the cross sanding and stuff. I'm going to uh, do a time lapse, me sanding uh, the front side of this fuel tank from 120. <laughs> buffing wheel is brand new. Now this one is used, so I'm gonna do it on a used one. When it's brand, brand new on the cutting box, um, what I'd like to do is, I take one of these, it's a rake. Um, pull the trigger, hold it against it for a couple seconds, or a second or so, just to roughen the edge up a little bit. A cutting buff, I only do that once, because you wanna keep it stiff. Um, a finishing buff, you do it pretty much every time you reapply compound so that that edge stays nice and clean. Basically all that is to it. You take your compound to apply this compound to a buff. It doesn't matter if it is a cutting buff, a coloring buff, a finishing buff, a flannel. It's all the same. Pull the trigger and then rub it against it. And as you've seen, I did a little bit on either side of the buff, about an inch or so or less, um, so that there's a little bit of abrasive on the side of the buff. So if you end up in a tight spot, then that side will actually polish as well. I'm gonna start polishing this. This section here, when I'm over here, halfway done, I'll stop and I'll show you the difference.
as you can see, it's quite hashy, but it's shiny, right? So, because this first step of polishing is very aggressive, it's cutting, we're removing sanding marks. Um, we will be refining this in the next step and put that true shine back onto it. As you can see, it's a very clear finish already in a cutting stage. That's nice, that's good, that's what you wanna see. So from sanding to a perfect nice mirror finish that's a perfect cut when I'm going to color this is going to pop like it's going to be amazing right um, as you've seen uh, I did left and right and I was traveling down first and it was getting really black um, and then I went back up that's called a reverse cut like I mentioned earlier it's fairly cold in here um, and you want to get a little bit of heat while you're polishing. The more heat, the more shine. That is exactly why I warmed up that surface first and like did that really aggressive pass downward and back up to get that little bit of a better cut that way. I'm gonna start, I'll do a time lapse on the, on the rest. On top of the fuel tank, um, usually if there's enough space, I'll sand and run my grinder underneath of it. But there's a lot of loose wires and stuff, so we're not doing that today. I'm gonna do that by hand to blend that in. Um, reason being. So we're gonna use some steel wall, Renegade Rebel Red, shake it up. Put a little bit on the surface. Usually I put a little bit less, but it's the first time that I'm using this, um, this steel wool. So bring it all over. And just give it a really good scrub. Back and forth. You make circles if you want. Keep rubbing it. As you can see, I'm using the palm of my hand. It gives you better pressure. You can push really hard. Like, I'm, I'm pushing pretty good. Um, I wanna keep going until, until you can see it becoming nice and gray, very uniform. Like you can see like little white dots or something. Try to keep going until they're gone. They don't always go if, they're, if the tank is too bad. You can literally feel the steel wool getting warm in between your hands. Paint there, it's a no. I learned over the years, sometimes it's so bad, you can't, it doesn't want to come off or whatever. You keep going and going and going and it just doesn't do anything. The only way to really do it is to take, take the fuel tank off or really sand underneath the bed and like polish it up high speed. Um, but that will be a next time video. This tank here will be just fine the way we're doing it now. Make sure that weld is nice too. 
And the reason why we're doing it right now, before the finish, is we can overlap a little bit. And then when we finish up, we can polish into the finish or touch up a little bit. It'll blend a lot better. Take a carry towel, put a little bit more on there, not too much. Just work it into the fibers, maybe a little bit more. First time using it. A little bit more, working in the fibers, and again, palm up your hand, back and forth, and just rub it. after touch-ups you can see it's super shiny but it's far from that now that's because we did four steps of sanding and already one step of polishing we're going to be doing the next step shortly so from before and after that's a very big difference if you ask me so now that the cut and the touch-ups are done we're going to go on color um, be using Hot and untreated, purple rouge, I think the machine goes all the way up to 30, 200 RPM per second. Uh, I got to cut at 6,000. When I put my respirator on, definitely recommend that. I can see I'm pretty dirty already, and all I know is this one. You definitely don't want to do any of that yet.
finished product. So, as you can see, it's super shiny. Uh, the clarity is there. Doesn't matter if we're on the back side or the front side of the tank, the clarity is there. When this is outside, it's gonna look even better because the light in here is not that great. Outside, pure daylight, that is going to pop. Better than factory finish. If you guys have any questions, just drop it down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can and answer most questions, or if not all, I try to answer all of them. Um, yeah, feel free to hit me up at any time.